Hello everyone, we're going to be playing one of the greatest games ever made, Atari 2600 Superman from 1978. Just kidding, we're going to be actually playing Amiga Shadow of the Beast, arguably one of the coolest games ever made. And I absolutely love this game, I played many versions of it, but I never had the luxury of playing the Amiga version. I truly wanted a Commodore 64, I wanted an Amiga, but I ended up getting an Atom computer instead. But I had fun with it for what it's worth. This does have quite an extended intro, about a two minute intro here, but I'm going to switch over to the PC and do the tutorial portion and then come back here to test the games out. And I'm going to do my best to show you guys and gals two different ways to run these games as well as setting them up. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, go into my core set for today's update, which would be 4-20-2018. And in the extras folder, there's going to be a new Amiga folder. And there's going to be a README and a nifty little program here, which will allow you to create hard drive images and edit them for use with the Amiga core. And there's a set of template files that you could use to set up the games. You cannot add the games like you would typically add like an NES or SNES game and then do your bin forward slash NES or bin forward slash SNES. It will not work with this. It works in an entirely different way. But I'll show you this. I have this program right here installed. I'm going to open it right now. ADF Opus. And you have a Windows Explorer here. And if, for instance, you accidentally close it, just reopen the program. You're going to see me do this a few times throughout the tutorial. So I'm going to open this program here. And then I'm going to navigate to my working folder. Here's where things get a little bit tricky. The bio setup portion is what I'm doing right now. I made a kick starts folder with all the bios. There are four bios total that we're going to need to work with. I'm going to navigate to that folder on the computer as well. So I have my working folder, kickstarts, I have these four here, and then I have the readme that I showed you. And uh, Q Clark did an exceptional job doing a tutorial I have it linked to in this uh, text file. He did a tremendous job. I've been busy doing the MAME 2003 updates and the MESS 2016 updates. But he did a tremendous job, uh, beat me to the punch on getting the written tutorial out. And uh, Q Clark, Mad Monkey, and this guy right here, Triangle plus Zero forward slash nine. He's a great guy, great guy from Switzerland. He was a tremendous help with a lot of the mess 2016 stuff. But Q Clark and Mad Monkey helped out with the Amiga stuff as well as the Triangle plus Zero forward slash nine. We'll call him Unicode for now because Unicode does not show up properly within a text file. But they're all great people. They've been tremendous helps here. And I uh, did a little bit of modification to the, to the tutorial and I'm going to notify him about it so he can update his tutorial. I simplified a couple steps. Here we'd have the typical bios here. There's four of them. Here's what they would typically be to begin with, like Kickstart V3.1 for the A500 Amiga, right down to the Kickstart V3.1 for the A1200. You're going to need to rename these to these very specific names, and I did it already in the folder, as you can see. They're all named that. And then what you're going to need to do is you would uh, take the Kick31 ROM, and I'm going to go into my hashi 2 ce user mods, and the master BIOS module, etc. Libretto system, and I'm going to copy it right into there. So this master BIOS module, when you're done installing the BIOS to it for all whichever systems you want to run, you can install it via Hashi as a normal module. Module, install extra modules. And then it'll pull up the list of all the HMODs that you can install. This is the proper way to install BIOS. So it's loading all the HMODs right now. 
right here it'll show up in the list I'll show you it on the list master bios module custom right here and there's a little readme for all the various cores I'm gonna have to update this for my release today the have the Amiga core as well and a couple other things but another thing to note here is when you go to install the modules you're gonna need to install three modules total to be able to run the Amiga core you're gonna need to install the master bios module obviously and I'm gonna go over that just a little bit more so you need that one then you're gonna need the PUAE core that's for the Amiga core so that master bios and then of course you're always gonna need the RetroArch, and I personally use the RetroArch Extreme. That contains many of my own personalized optimizations for games and cores to make them run better, more optimally, and faster and such. But once this is all said and done, you'd install all three of those. But we have another portion of the BIOS to contend with right here. This is where things get a little bit tricky. In the template that we have right here, we're going to extract it to the template folder. You're going to have this file here called WHD Load HDF. This is a hard drive image that is going to contain the other files that we need to work with. So what I'm going to do is open this right here. I have these files already navigated to. And then I'm going to have to open that file that I just showed you, the WHD Load file. Open, and I'm going to navigate to where that is on the computer. And I'm notorious for opening up many, many folders, but <laughs> get used to it. Extras, Amiga, Template, WHD Load. Then I'm going to go into the DEVS folder, Kickstarts. And I'm not going to copy the Kick31 ROM, but I'm going to take the other three. And I'm simply going to drag and drop them into the other folder, like so. So now they're all merged into the WHD load file. Then I can simply close these and these will all be said and done. Now I'm going to go to that template folder and I'm going to copy this to the same exact thing that I did, the master BIOS module. And this is where the tutorial is a little bit different. Just watch and see how I change things. So I'm going to go to User Mods, Master BIOS Module, etc., Libretto, System. The tutorial was set up so you'd have to do this for every game, but I modified it so you can do it one single time. And it'll cover all games. I had no issues whatsoever. So I would just let it copy there. So I have the Kick 31 BIOS as well as the WHD Load BIOS all within the system of the Master BIOS Module. And I'll install it and I'm ready to go. Now i got to set up the games, which is a whole other thing entirely. There are two different ways you could set up the games. I'm going to show you both ways that I do them. So let's get this going here. You cannot add the game as a file. But what we're going to do is actually create the game first. And then we're going to add it. So what I'm going to do here is go to the folder where I have my games at. In my working folder. We're going to take uh, Shadow of the Beast as our, our working game here. And create it into a working file games we're going to extract shadow of the beast to a self name folder that's the best thing to do just extract it to a folder of the same name we're going to go in there and go in there one more time there's going to always be a slave file this is going to be what you need to be able to boot the drive just like a real hard drive you're going to have to rename the slave file to game slave like this game period slave if you do not do this and do not add this properly it will not boot whatsoever so we have these all added all the files are set to go I'm gonna reopen ADF again but uh, before I do that I'm gonna actually outside this and look at exactly how big this entire folder is it's a little bit under two megabytes so what you're gonna want to do is uh, when I open a program just watch this I'm going to navigate to that exact folder where I have Shadow of the Beast at. And I open up the wrong folder, so I'm going to reopen the program. As I said, if you end up having to close the Windows directory, just close it and reopen it. Nice and easy. Great, great, exceptional program. 
Games, Shadow of the Beast. Now I'm going to go inside here. I have the slave and all that good stuff. But I'm going to navigate to it one more time because I want to add this a particular way. There are two different ways you could add this. I'm going to show you the way that I've been adding them and then I'll show you the other way you could add them. So I'm going to open up the program one more time here. And I'm just going to leave Shadow of the Beast right there with the info file. And then I'm going to go here. Leave that here. I'm going to go to File, New. And I'm going to Browse. And I'm going to create a game. I'll do it in my working folder. HDF folder. I'm going to change this to uh, HDF, but I'm going to have to name it. I'm going to do... I would keep these names simplified to make things easier. And they are case sensitive. Shadow of the Beast HDF. All lowercase. Save it. Then I'm going to click hard file. I'm going to manage the size to the right here. I'm going to scale up to 2 megabytes, just a little bit over what the size of the actual game is. Then I'm going to click open after creating and create it. Now that I have it created, I'm simply going to drag and drop these files right into the folder here. And then I can close that and I'm all good. But you can additionally just go inside the folder and drag all these files over too and it'll still work. It worked both ways for me. So you can do all the files individually or you can do the info with the game folder file. Either way it should work for you. So that's all good. I'm going to close this now. Now we're going to add it so that we could use it in two different ways via Hacksheet. I'm going to open up Hashi here. I'm going to go to File, Add More Games. Wait a second, I told you a few minutes ago you can't add the game. So we're going to have to do something different. We're going to go into that template again. Again, back to my core set. Here's where things get even a little more tricky. Extras, Amiga, Amiga Template. These are the template files that I put together and QClart also put together. I did them two for the dummy folder and two for the standard setup with the uh, Hashi. And if you look at a readme here, you'll see that uh, you can run OCS, which are original chipset games, and then ECS, which are enhanced chipset games. We're just going to be running original chipset games right now. So we're going to take the template for OCS right here. And we're gonna copy it. We'll just copy it into the games folder that I was working with. Where I created the HDF. Now what we're gonna need to do is add this as a game. But I'm gonna rename it. But here, I wanna show you one little thing here before I rename it. I'm gonna try adding it via Hashi and watch what happens here. This is uh, yet another tricky thing here. And I'm going to show you a little workaround with this that I've done before in a previous video for both DS and OpenBore. i got to go to my uh, working folder here, sorry. Just a whole amalgamation of tons and tons of folders everywhere on my computer. HDF. And you're going to click Games and Apps to All Files. And I'm going to try adding this template OCS for the original chipset games. Pay attention to the ID that comes up. ZDNLD. And then I'm going to try renaming it to Shadow of the Beast. And then I'm going to try re-adding that file. give me the same ID so the problem here is if you try using this for more than one game as a template you're gonna wipe out and erase the game that you previously did it with and I showed you this in the DS as well as the open bore tutorials but I'm gonna show you a way to work around this I'm gonna simply create a text file and this is gonna be a dummy text file it's gonna be shadow of the beast text and then I'm simply gonna take both of these files the UAE which is the configuration file I need to boot with, and then the text file, and I'm going to send them to a 7-zip. 
Well, I'm actually going to just do the UAE file first. Just the, you'll see why. So I have the proper name here. And then I'm going to open the 7-zip. And I'm going to drag the text file inside of it. Then I'm going to close it. Then I'm going to navigate to the hashi 2 ce directory. What I basically did is by having more than one file in a zip or 7-zip, it'll be an archive. So I'm going to go into my games SNES and look at for the most recently modified. Right here. Then I'm going to go into that folder. And I need to re-edit because I goofed up there. I need to add this file here as an archive. Okay, because I added the wrong file a minute ago. So we have that added. I'm going back to that folder here. Make sure you add the 7-zip. I'm going back to the hashi 2 ce folder again. Remember, I never edit my videos. You get to see me do my thing as I go. Now what I'm going to do is open this file up. And I'm going to delete the text file outside of it. So now it just has the configuration file inside. Then I'm going to go into Hashi2. Up to the very, very top. And I do UCE. I'm going to right click on it and decompress the selected game. And then I'm going to have to do the bin forward slash. And the commands, if you have uh, the update today, it'd be P-U-A-E. Bin forward slash P-U-A-E. But once you get my course set update today for 420, you'll be able to also do UAE. But right now I'm doing P-U-A-E. Then I'm going to rename this game to Amiga. And then I'm going to call Shadow of the Beast. And remember, anything that you type in a name here is easily searchable through the Google art here. Just type whatever you want to search for. And I'm going to add that. It is always a wise idea to close Hashi and reopen it before you sync, export, or manually transfer games to ensure that the desktop files are properly saved. I do not need the other file. I'm going to delete that. So I have this all good here. I'm going to navigate to that folder here. And I'm going to need to copy one more file into that folder. And that file is going to be this configuration file. Actually, should I say, I'm sorry about that. The game. I added the configuration file as a game. Now I have to actually copy the game into the folder. And once I copy the game into the folder, I'm going to open up this template using Notepad++, which is also in my core set in the Extras Tools folder. You're going to edit with Notepad. We're going to look at the directories here. You're going to go down to the way, way bottom here. It's going to say Ver Games CLV folder name here, game name here. I have to change this CLV folder to the actual CLV folder that I have right above. CLV hyphen Z hyphen G W D I A. And then I need to change the game name here to the exact name that I named the game. We'll verify that. Shadow of the Beast. And then we're going to save it. And just double check you have it all saved. I have uh, W G W D I A. That is all I added right. So I have everything I need. I have the configuration file. And then I just copy the game into that same folder. Now I could sync it, export it, or manually transfer it. And the game's all set to go. And then there's an additional way you could do the games as well. Which I'm going to show you after we get back. But I'm going to do one more game here. Well, let's create one more game. I'm going to open up that program yet again. One more game here. ADF. I'm going to navigate to that working folder. But I have to extract the game first before I go there. Games. We'll do Alien Breed. I'm going to extract that to Alien Breed. I'm going to go inside there. And I'm going to change Alien Breed Slave to Game Slave. 
Then I have to look at how large the entire directory is. Still less than 2 megabytes. We're good to go. So I'm going to navigate to that folder now that I have it. Remember, don't navigate to the folder until you make the file name changes. Otherwise, they're going to show up with the old file names. So I'm going to the working folder. Games. Alien Breed. And then I'm going to do another hard drive image. New. New ADF. I'm going to browse. And I'm going to create. We'll make it Alien Breed. HDF. And I'm going to save it, and I'm going to do a hard file again, and I'm going to change it to 2 megabytes there. Open after creating, create, and I'm going to drag and drop these files again. But this time I'm going to just drag the internal files there, which I showed you the other way you could do this. I'll drag them all over, make sure you get every file. We got them all copied over, we're good. Now we could close these. And we have the new hard drive image. Again, let's open a million folders here. And I'm going to do the same exact thing I did with Shadow of the Beast. I'm going to... For right now, I'm going to create a template here. I'm just going to use the same exact file right here. The Shadow of the Beast UAE file. But I'm going to rename it to Alien Breed. And then I'm going to add it as a game. But of course I'm going to 7-zip it. And then I'm going to create a text file. And I'm going to drag it into there. And then I'm going to add that 7-zip as a game via Hexi. And it will have, it'll have a different CLV ID because of what I just did. So, Alien Breed 7-zip. Import as archive. Now I have two entirely different CLV folders. I'm good to go there. I'm going to go to my games folder. And go to the recently modified there. Again, go into the 7-zip, delete the text file, then I'm going to go into Hashi, right-click, and decompress to select a game, then forward slash P-U-A-E, then of course, uh, Amiga Alien Breed, and then I'm going to Google for some art. See if I get anything here that I can work with. <laughs> Doesn't really matter. That looks like alien breed to me. I'm just going to add that as the artwork. Sometimes you could simplify the names in your name here where I can just type in alien breed rather than have Amiga semicolon space and I'll have a better result. But I have these all added right here and I can run both of these via the sync export method but of course I have to do one additional step like I showed you I have to take the game file and copy it to the directory then I have to open up the configuration UAE file with notepad and then I have to change the CLV folder to exactly what it is up there and you're gonna really love the dummy folder method because it is far easier CLV hyphen Z hyphen ZVCGI and then game name here I kept it simplified alien breed then I'm gonna save it all good to go close a couple I'll just leave that open then I would just close hashi then I'd reopen it and then I'd do my manual transfer sync or export but I'm gonna switch over to the system and show you the test and then I'm gonna come back one more time and show you how I do the dummy folder method so I'm pushing a button to start the game 
and there are two bugs that you will run into with this core. I'm gonna first off, uh, since I'm not using the Biza mode right now, I'm gonna go into video settings. And I'm gonna turn integer scale off. You can turn it on and off depending on what your circumstances are, but I'm turning it off so I have a bigger game right now. But generally, you can just hold down the L1 button previous to loading the game from the main user interface and it'll resize it accordingly with your borders. But I'm leaving it off for right now and we're going to play this. And I'm going to show you both of the bugs that could transpire with this core. We're going to start the game here. Excellent, excellent game. Very, very happy to be able to play this. One of the bugs you have is that you have the chance of your controller losing its connection if you go into your RetroArch settings. So right now if I go into RetroArch settings, I'm unable to use my controller. But if I go into Quick Menu, Controls, and toggle it, and go right back to Resume, I'll have my controller back. You'll see what I mean when I start the game. Start button will pull up the keyboard. This button's pulling up the PUAE main menu, which you're not going to need at all, ever. So you can just open up RetroArch Options again, resume, and then click OK on it to exit out of it. But we're starting the game here. And there are two different ways you can load this. You can do the CLV method, which I just showed you. I'm going to show you the dummy folder method as well, which is a lot faster and easier. I cannot control my character right now because I went into the RetroArch option, so I'm going to go back into Quick Menu, Controls, Toggle the Controller, Resume. Now I can control and play this fantastic game. And after I get some sleep today, I'm going to be playing this game and I'm going to be doing my core set update. I mean, the color palette is phenomenal. I mean, Amiga... There's so many people who have told me how fantastic the Amiga is. I'm seeing it for myself in the flesh right now. Incredible. But this is Shadow of the Beast. And I'm going to do the dummy folder method. But do not quit RetroArch. There's another thing you're going to want to do. You may potentially, depending on which game you load, you might get a C8 error when you try quitting. Just watch. I might get my C8 error. It may C8 on me. Okay, when I boot up the system again, I'm going to show you how to prevent that C8 error from happening. And I'm going over to the PC real quick, and I'm doing the dummy folder method. And the dummy folder method is very, very easy. What we're going to do is basically just simply go into the flash drive. You're going to have a Hashi Games Dummy folder and create an Amiga folder. Then you're simply going to copy the game you want to have in there. Just watch the Alien Brie game that I have. I'll simply copy the Alien Brie game in there. Alien Breed HDF. And then I'm going to go into my core set and get the template that I need. I don't have to do anything else but get the template. Here's where things get a lot easier. Template. I'm going to take the original chipset dummy USB UAE. Copy it into this folder. I'm going to rename it to Alien Breed. Just for my own ease of convenience. And then I'm going to edit it. I only have to edit one single thing. Just game name here. To Alien Breed. Save it. Now I can play the game. That's as quick and easy as it is to do the dummy folder. I'm going to switch over to the computer again. I mean the mini SNES now. I'm going to do the dummy folder method. And I'll show you the proper way to exit the core so you don't have the C8 error.
This also affects the PPSSPP core. Say that one more time. The PPSSPP core. So this method of workaround to exit in a core will work for many, many cores if you happen to get C8 errors on exit. It's because memory locks up and it is a, basically a control out delete method of escaping the core. It'll completely free the memory up. And there are two cores that could do it. But we're booting up right now. And we're going to do the dummy folder method. RetroArch. Load core, Amiga PUAE, load content, start directory dummy, Amiga, and we'll load the UAE file for Shadow of the Beast. I have it configured to the dummy folder. And hopefully I didn't make a little goof with Alien Breed. <laughs> If you make it a little goof, you can just check your configuration file and or redo the hard drive image. Yep, it loaded fine. I'm going to directly load content and go right to another game. I'm not exited in the core yet. But I'm going to see if I did Alien Breed right. I'm going to load Alien Breed UAE. If I made a goof, it'll give me a little error message. But hopefully I did it correctly. So far, so good. And we have action here. Alien Breed is a fantastic game. I'm going to let you experience that for yourself because I know you guys and girls are going to be trying it out. But I'm going to show you exactly how to quit the core. Go to RetroArc Options. Do not use your home button. Do not exit RetroArc. Instead, Install one of two cores. Install 2048. And both of these cores are fantastic. They're, you install them and you can load them as a core and play the game. You can load 2048. Or you could load... Mr. Boom. The Bomberman clone. So you load one of those two cores. 2048. Start the core. And then you can go into RetroArch Options and quit and you will not get your C8 error. Just like that. That's how you free up memory. Do it for the PSP core as well. See, that's all it takes, guys and gals. But I'm going to post this template into my Mega NZ link for right now, and then when I wake up later, I'll post it into my normal core set. Hope this helps you guys out, and feel free to ask me any questions if you need any help.